Another okay. example. Why is he so damn charming? The again, the fr Frank, his name is Frank, the guy. The, Protector. The guy. Protector role. Women turns out love protecting pe like ma male that can protect because again, survival, competence, prefrontal activation. So that, there's tons of stuff there. I think with the Titanic one too, it's a great, but you have, you laid out a little bit of your work earlier comparing it with dreams about love yeah. and the research there. So you're starting to give lectures on that yeah, and studying like the brain science behind love. What, what, what made you interested in doing that? Well, to, to be frank, I mentioned this during one of my previous courses at Peterson Academy. I talked about human nature. It was a course about human nature, why we feel attraction. And there was a lecture on love and why we feel uh, you know, altruism, romantic love, spiritual love and all that. And it's kind of, you know, I mentioned, oh, it would be fun to do a course on, on love. And then so one of the one of the one of the um, directors over there and works there, Nancy is a really nice, nice girl. She told the the folks, Michaela and and and, jo and Jordan, follow her husband about this, and then they asked me to 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 do this course. So and that was interesting. So I learned a lot about preparing for this course. It's extremely fascinating learning about love. Really dig, digging deep into doing a whole whole course on love itself, romantic love and. And then going into why, you know, the passion and infatuation of love. And, you know, love is interesting. Romantic love is so interesting. When you're in it, you feel like it's the whole world and this, yes. the pers purpose of existence. And I got to start, I, in my course, I have a lot of, I have a lot of um, vignettes or case studies from movies, Titanic, um, why James Bond is charming, you know, why the movie Cinema Paradiso? Do you know that movie? Oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, it's one of the best of all time. Why? How come he waits for Helena? Helena on the uh, for hundred days he wakes, waits in front of her window, and then the last minute he runs off and she runs after him. What's the neurochemistry of that? You know, and so it's it has a lot of interesting case studies and looking at the brain as well, and and so I think it will be, be fun. One of the most fun courses I'll teach. How do so when you're breaking down like fiction like that? Mm -hmm. How do you relate that scientifically? Oh, neuroscience of that is, is for example, anticipation of reward. When does dopamine centers fire? When if I'm with a girl now and I and I leave her, when is the most when is her brave brain most likely to crave my absence? Is it a week or is mm. it two weeks after my, my departure? Why doesn't it work to be too much into her, a girl in the beginning, or vice versa, a girl into a man? But right. but it's more it's more girl men into a girl that can is be a bad thing. Well, it has to do with the, that the girl, for example, expect prefrontal integration. What's prefrontal integration is that if you show a girl too early that you've fallen for her mm. emotionally. I'm not saying to play it fake and be a different person. But the fact is, if you see a girl and after a week tell her that you're in love with her, Joey knows what happens. She'll dump you, right? If yeah. I'm in love with you. You're never even going to get to the point to be dumped. <laughs> Correct? Yeah. Why is that? Well, it's because she expects a man to have calm, yes. ex ex manly composure, which is a direct correlate of neural circuitry that has to do with prefrontal inhibition, being able to control your sexual desires, emotional core, yes. um, and all that. And, 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 and that itself is a predictor of survival in a very dangerous world and a predictor of resource acquisition. And it's a predictor of all these things that will help you survive. So this is one example of, of how your brain directly and, and neuro, neuroscience plays into these love scenarios. How, how, why is Leonardo DiCaprio so damn charming in Titanic? He's a, he's a, he's a, he's I mean, a, he's fucking Leonardo DiCaprio. He's handsome. Yeah. He's handsome in the movie. I agree. Yeah. So, it's, but, but it's not the whole it's story. Right, no, you're right. It's he's extremely charming because he's basically a bum, right? He's a poor guy who's on this, on this, on this big ship with this rich lady but he's so comfortable in his own bloody yes. skin. He's like, he's he's like, I'm a bum. Um, I have nothing, but I'm gonna just own it. That's right. And that confidence is a di direct predictor of survival in, in a very harsh world. It's if you are confident, that shows how the brain is better integrated versus a non-confident guy, which would mean a non-confident guy would have less prefrontal um, uh, in integration, be more impulsive have yes. more fear and anxiety centers of the brain being active, which again would be, um, again, go against resource acquisition and providing this lady with a, with a 
for the you know, protective um, environment. Yes. The bodyguard. Have you seen the bodyguard with Whitney Houston? Of course. Kevin another, Costner. Another Fuck example. Yeah. Why is he so damn charming? The guy, the fr Frank, his name is Frank, the guy. Yeah, Protector. The bodyguard. Protector role. Women, turns out, love protecting pe like ma male that can protect because, again, survival, competence, prefrontal activation. So that, there's tons of stuff there. I think with the Titanic one, too, it's a great point. Like, he's comfortable in his own skin. Mm -hmm. But he also, the character Jack, played yep. by Leo, mm -hmm. he finds a way to chase without attachment. Yeah. Right? He's detached mm -hmm. from the outcome. Mm-hmm. He'd like her to like him, mm -hmm. but he doesn't, he, he, he's not going to, it's not going to affect his reason for being if, yeah. if she doesn't. So like there's some sort of mental game there where it's a, a combination of confidence yeah. and showing interest, yeah. but not tying that interest to the meaning of his life. It's and it makes her simultaneously then want to chase him. It's a beautiful point. And I, I think, and you can clearly see in that movie that Leo um, or Jack is definitely into her. When she rejects him at some point in the middle of the story, he says, I can't, I'll stay with my mom and the rich guy. And he goes out to the sh out on the um, very front of the ship and you can see him. He's kind of handsome with his hair sort of, uh, he's kind of looking outside and his eyes are kind of closed and he's looking. You can see he's bloody heartbroken. It's not like he's heartbroken. Right. He's not like he's just, oh, I'm nonchalant. I'm, I just lost the, perhaps the girl of my life. He's heartbroken. But he remains composed. Yes. And that's the point. You want to have emotions. You want to feel the thing. You want yes. to bloody have feelings for the girl and being bold about it. But you want to have that prefrontal integration where you can stay composed and stay like on track with life, even though things are shaky. You feel but, things, but you feel emotions, you, but you don't let the emotions control you and define you. Have you have the, the emotional limbic core will not overtake the prefrontal. And it didn't in Jack's case. He just went out and he was looking and he was obviously sad. And sadness is a good thing. It, it's, it shows emotion. And then, what's her name? Uh, Rose. Rose runs out after him and he looks. He says, they told me you were out here. And he, she, looks at, she looks at Jack and says, um, he says, I, I changed my mind. You came back. I see. She says, I changed my mind. And she says, he, says, he says nothing. He says, shh, come here. And then they go out and he holds her and says, you know, and he does one of his char charming, see, with girls, not that you want to ask me because I'm very clumsy at this, but <laughs> <laughs> I used to have a few tricks in my, up my Listen, sleeve. I, th I, I think that's about to change. I used to, I used to have a few tricks up my sleeve when I was in my teenage years. I was, I was a bit more smooth. I'm not too, bra I that's wasn't. That's when he had a Swiss army knife, just saying. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just joking. But, but, but look, what he does is extremely charming. He says, Close your eyes. He's being very mysterious. He's being very sort of romantic. And then, you know, and I'm flying, Jack, and all that. It's actually very romantic, that whole scene. It's a very, not only romantic, but it's a, from, from a dopamine perspective and a brain perspective, it's very persuasive. Yes. It's, it's, it's a metaphor for, look, I'm going to, I'm going to be, the, I'm going to take you on a magic carpet in life and just allow you to fly and be free. It's free from the, the constraints of the, the palace uh, and, and, and the rich, chap and 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 all that so it it's in tapping into her dopamine centers it's a great movie to teach with because it because it's a fine balance you know yeah. that like you'll see a lot of things like in the in the you know online like tata sphere or whatever mm -hmm. where it's like you gotta go hard this way and be yeah, like yeah. fuck you and yeah. it, that's that's not reality no, no but the other way of being needy yeah. And all over it, and trying to emotionally attach yourself. You cannot do too that. Too early, you cannot do no, that. No, you can't do it, that. It does not make any sense, and it doesn't make it doesn't make sense scientifically to a woman's brain. You can't. It doesn't make sense, and she can't help it. She's not like she hates you, and she's it's a being evil. She no, it, she can't help it. She's wired like That's this. That's right. And look, same thing for you. If the girl is all over you all the time, would That's you? That's exactly you would right. Feel the same dude, thing. It still works it's the same, same thing. way. But I want to say something else. I don't want your audience and your you know folks to go away with the idea that you have to play a role and be inauthentic. No, you're not saying that. I'm no. not taking it that way. My point is when yeah. time comes, when time is ripe and there's a girl there and you've been you've been sufficiently composed and you haven't chased and you've been yourself and you've been authentic and you haven't played games, don't play any of don't play games. It will destroy you. Yeah. Playing psychological Machiavellian games is the worst thing you can do. 100%. Be yourself, but when time comes, let her know what you feel inside. Yes. Because you will regret it. And there's nothing worse than the regret of a woman that could have become, you could have a, a story with 
a beautiful story with and you held back because of fear, because of fear of rejection, don't. Don't overwhelm her, but bloody tell her what you feel. Thank you guys for checking out this clip. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe and hit the like button on this video. It is a huge, huge help. And if you'd like to check out this clip's full podcast episode, that link is in the description below or right here. And finally, you can follow me on Instagram and X by using the links in my description below.